Hello and welcome back to AP Psychology here on Educator.com. In this segment, we're going to be taking a look at the biomedical treatment of disorders. So in other words, drug therapies as well as uh, some, some brain surgeries. So this is a uh, uh, an area that you probably are relatively familiar with, although I'm going to be throwing some drug names out at you and you're going to be, need to be familiar with uh, uh, many of these drugs. So first, biomedical therapy, we look at drugs. We look at electroconvulsive therapy, otherwise known as ECT. There is a magnetic impulse therapy that's rel relatively new. There is psychosurgery. And connected with a psychiatrist, we're going to be looking at psychiatrists prescribing drugs and particular categories of drugs. So drug therapies, um, this whole section falls under the realm of what is known as psychopharmacology. So uh, psychopharmacology, so you've got the, uh, the study of, and then uh, pharmacology, we're looking at drugs. And with psych, we've got the, uh, psyche means mind. So we've got drugs, the study of drugs and how they affect the mind. So uh, there's also pharmacotherapy, and that's the use of drugs to alleviate or reduce or ameliorate or uh, improve an individual's emotional disturbance. There are going to be three major categories. There are the anxiolytics, the anti-anxiety drugs. There are the antidepressants and the antipsychotics. And so we're going to be looking at each one of those individually. So factors to consider when uh, dealing with and considering drug therapy. One is going to be what about the normal recovery, recovery rate of people who are untreated? Do you need the drug? And uh, other, another factor is going to be the placebo effect. If we get, and remember this from the, the experiment unit when we looked at the, the methodologies, with a double-blind procedure, when you don't know if you're getting the placebo or the real drug, there's still improvement with the placebo. So do... Do we need do we need the drug in order to get better? Or will we be able to get better without the drug? So that's one of those very important questions that needs to be asked. First category, anxiolytics. These produce relaxation and reduce anxiety. They are central nervous system depressants. You remember the central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord. Otherwise, these are, are, these are also known as tranquilizers. These are also known, the category of drugs is the benzodiazepines. One of those names that I love, the benzodiazepines. Examples of the anti-anxiety drugs include Xanax, Clonopin, Valium, and Ativan. I suspect you've probably heard of Xanax if you've watched that series on January, that little girl who is uh, seven years old and schizophrenic. Um, uh, clonopin is one of the drugs that she is on. Valium, you may have heard of. There's a book called I'm Dancing as Fast as I Can. And I believe the woman's name was Barbara Gordon. And this is a book I read years ago. And it was about her addiction to Valium. So these are drugs that you can get addicted to. There are antidepressant medications that can be used for certain anxiety disorders. So uh, many medications originally approved for the treatment of depression have been found to also relieve symptoms of anxiety. So there's a category that we're going to be looking at called SSRIs, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors, uh, as well as tricyclic antidepressants. Uh, there are some antidepressants known as monoamine oxidase inhibitors, the MAOIs, and there are going to be some uh, newer atypical antidepressants, they can actually work on anxiety symptoms as well. And so even though a person may not be experiencing depression, these antidepressant drugs have also been found to work well on uh, anxiety disorders.